It knows how to hunt. I know how to survive. Hi guys, uh, congratulations on the film. I uh, saw it yesterday for it was terrific. Um, Amber, I wanted to start with you. Um, there's obviously been a bit of mixed reaction to the Predator sequel since the original film. So when it came to this role, was there any hesitation or was it the fact that you're the first female lead in this franchise that just made it an instant yes? I didn't know that this was a Predator movie. So honestly, that conversation was not a part of my thinking at all. Um, I just knew that it was a story about a young Comanche woman who wanted to be a hunter. And I had to, I mean, I hadn't even read the script. I just had to audition scenes and I thought that she was very interesting and I think Dan is a, a just you know incredible and that was enough for me to feel like I connected to it and I thought that it was something that I would enjoy and then way later I found out what it was. Yeah and when you found out as a Predator film did that just amp up the excitement that who you were going up against? I was mostly anxious. <laughs> I was actually pretty I had a lot of anxiety about it for like the first couple minutes and then it was just like, I think a lot of wrapping your head around like, and when I say like quite long, I mean, it was like over a year after I had my initial audition. So like when I would think about this project, it was not like, oh, that thing, you know, it was just very like, it was had so much time to solidify in the story that I thought it was that when I realized what it really was, it was more of like a going back and like figuring things out and kind of reorganizing the fact that like, oh, there are no more surprises. I see what this is. And like, it kind of had a new onset of questions and all those things, which I don't think is what like brought on the, I think it was just like a lot of information, you know, but very obviously like very exciting and, and ultimately like something that I was really excited about. Yeah, definitely. And Jane, I'm going to give you a chance to embarrass Amber a little bit here. What was it about her that made you realize she was a perfect fit for Nardu? Well, I always thought she was. You know, because like I said, uh, I mean, like she just said, the the process went went on uh, a bit because you have to remember it was the pandemic, so everything yeah. stopped. And I think when she first read for it, I wasn't even on the project yet. Yeah. She didn't know I was on the project. We know each other, and I know yeah. her parents, her dad's like my brother, and her yeah, mom I her and I are close. So, so then, um, and I didn't know she, you know, was in the top running. Um, and so when I came on board, we start looking at all the pictures and I saw her and I just immediately, because I know her physicality, okay. I know that like when, uh, because she was friends, she is friends with my children. And um, she, I mean, when I first met her, let me just say, <laughs> she, she was doing, she used to do CrossFit like crazy. So uh, it was during like an audition process for a different project. And I went in to, I think, see your mom or something. Cause yeah. I wasn't, or, I don't think I knew anybody that was auditioning, but she was doing handstands against the wall on one with one arm. So I knew, <laughs> knew already she was a beast. So I was like, okay. Good time to stop was right when I started this movie. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> JK, JK. So, uh, so, so she was incredible. So I just already knew, I already knew. I was like, oh, she's native and she's very athletic and she can do all of this. So, you know, I knew she had the physicality. So I don't know if that's embarrassing. I embarrass her with the story doing handstand with like one hand. I, I've never like, done that. So neither, neither have I. I just sit down all day, so I don't do that. Um, <laughs> and as Jane was pointing out, this is a very physical role. Like you're put through the ringer, Amber. Like it's pretty much nonstop. So how was the training? Was it just remembering all that CrossFit stuff? Was it easy, you know? Ah, oh, I can do this. No, I mean, it was the, the training was like, it was four weeks of, of like weapons training and working with the stunt team and we had a personal trainer and stuff like that. But really it's like when you get out into it, I mean, it was very fun. Like I do enjoy, you know, all those elements. Like I, I enjoy doing action. I enjoy being out, you know, outdoors. We shot like 90, I feel like 8% of this movie outside um, and all that stuff. Like I, I just enjoy in my life. So it's like, a nice happenstance that it just coincides with what you know we were doing at work but yeah as you're pointing out the landscapes in this movie are absolutely stunning um i'm so glad i saw it on the big screen for where it deserves it um jane as a producer though shooting in natural light must bring its own headache um was there any challenges as you were doing a production um i don't think so i think 
I, I don't feel like it was really challenged because of light, but I think it was challenged because we were shooting in the outdoors. We were shooting in forests, on cliffs. You know, um, I think safety was always really, you know, forefront in my mind because we have to be careful. There was, you know, one place that we shot that just had this little narrow, uh, we could only get one, um, what do you call those ATVs up it just to carry in equipment. And then we'd have to wait till they were all up and then they'd all start coming down again because they couldn't like oh. have two ways to pass member at, up the, there cliff? at the cliff. Yeah. That was on Moose Mountain. Oh, yeah. So, um, but you know, the crazy thing was, you know, like the, the bears were waking up because we were there from spring to fall. Okay. So, you know, the bears are waking up, they're hungry. So we could have actually had some walk on bears in the bear <laughs> scene that you saw. Yeah. Because that was the timing that, you know, bears were waking up. So we had a bear guard with us all the time. And uh, he was able to, you know, kind of just watch out and kind of look, you know, in the places where, you know, bears might be. Because it, it was like an outdoor, like totally outdoor thing, which I loved, though. I loved it. Yeah. And obviously the other really great thing about this film is how authentic it is to the Comanche setting. And I was talking to Dan earlier. And he was saying ever since he was working on the script, he was always working with someone to make sure that that was the case. Um, and for you, when you first came on board, were you impressed with just the fact that he had gone to this effort to make it authentic? Because you can imagine a version of this film that doesn't necessarily use uh, pretty much an all Comanche cast and that kind of stuff. Is it impressive for you that it went this way? Well, it is uh, because usually when I, I, I'm a producer and as a native producer, when I'm brought on for content, um, usually the content in the projects may be like 25 to 20 percent native content. Mm -hmm. So when I first read the script, it's like 110 percent. And I say the 10 percent because we have a language component mm -hmm. that we did in post-production where the whole movie is in Comanche. So that's really important uh, to me because authenticity, representation, you know, uh, it, it checks all of the boxes, but that's a huge undertaking, not only just to make sure the film looks good, but to make sure that we have the correct language at the end. It's incredible. Yeah. And uh, Amber, with as well as shooting out on these landscapes, there are a lot of big set pieces that require physicality from you, like the mud pit, which I imagine wasn't the most pleasant thing to do. Um, is there is that the sequence that stands out as the most challenging or was there a different thing that perhaps surprised you about how difficult it was? I guess that one. I mean, that definitely was surprising at, at the challenge of it, I guess, because, you know, I felt like there was never a time that I felt like I was going to go in and like, oh, today's the easy day. But definitely I didn't expect what that brought. I mean, there there's a number of things that come to mind. I mean, you know, that the river sequence and then like the bear and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, like the big fight in the end sequence and stuff like that. So it's just like, there's so, and each thing, you know, has a, a different story and a different reason, which I think is what ultimately makes it interesting and what makes all the sequences cool and hopefully not redundant is that, you know, they're all, they're different in, in the terrain, they're different in the style, they're different in what's happening. Um, so yeah, they all definitely like presented their own challenges, but I would say that that one was the most unpleasant only because of the smell. Obviously, the, the Predator is such an iconic uh, movie creation. And even though you know on set that it's a person in that and it's not real, um, I can't ima help imagining that there's still a little bit of a shock when you first see it. Is that the case or is it just, oh, you know, that's another guy in the cast? So funny. That's how it feels, I feel like, until he like, because the way that he sits, it's like the suit and he literally just like has it open and he takes the head off. So it really does just look like a guy in a suit. Like it's very silly to look at. And then all of a sudden we're like ready to go. And you know, it's like a big part and he like suits up and everybody, it takes like so many people to put the head on and there's an animatronic head that like three or four people run and you know, like the mouth is moving and all this stuff. And like, that's when, that's the moment when it really gets real. And Jane, you mentioned it earlier, but it's getting, praise getting a Comanche dub on Disney Plus in the UK and Hulu in the US. Was there ever a discussion that that was going to be the only version of the film as opposed to the English language one as well? Or were you always going to give that choice? Well, originally Dan, uh, when he, uh, when the, the film was written and he, the first script I had across the top, it said all dialogue in Comanche. And I was like, oh my God, yes. And that's the way he originally pitched it to the studio. 
but then you know there was this merger and everything happened so uh the fact that it's getting a full comanche dub is incredible because being a comanche there's never been a movie in its entirety in my language in comanche and there's never been a brand new movie that's been released like this on disney plus that you have an option to watch it in Coman uh, comanche because it's never happened for any native language mm -hmm. so this movie not only do we have a female native lead you know it sets this bar really high for like shifting that paradigm that hollywood works off of when they think of native content finally amber um there's always with these possibilities that there could be future adventures, future sequels or whatever. I'm guessing as long as they avoid mud pits in the sequel, you might be up for coming back. <laughs> I mean, I have not heard anything, but I definitely had a great time on this one. So. Mm -hmm.